A dad was left heartbroken after his only daughter decided to elope with her boyfriend to another city. He then learns that she begged on the streets while heavily pregnant and without proper shelter or money for daily meals. Before we continue, please take some time to subscribe to Daily Dose, like and share this video with your friends. It might brighten their day and inspire them to do good. Also keep watching because an important lesson awaits at the end of the video. After graduating high school with flying colors, Brooke decides to forego heading to college in order to support her boyfriend Ethan with his career. He was a musician and had dreams of becoming a rock star. I'm moving to San Francisco, Brooke. Ethan told her after graduation. If we can't be together there, then let's just break up. I don't want to be in a long-distance relationship, he said, which made Brooke easily decide not to pursue her dreams of going to college in Boston. No, we don't have to break up, Ethan. I'll move to San Francisco with you, she said without hesitation because she was in love with him. Ethan was pleased that Brooke let go of her dreams to support his. They didn't waste any time and began to plan their big move to San Francisco which was an eight-hour drive from their local Los Angeles. Brooke broke the news to her dad, James, who raised her alone ever since she was two years old. Upon hearing the news, he tried to talk his daughter out of it. Honey, you are too young to be moving in with a boy. You had dreams of going to college and becoming a lawyer. What happened to that? He asked. Dad, I'm 18. You can't be dictating how you want me to live my life. I no longer want to be a lawyer. I want to be with Ethan, she cried out. I don't trust him. How will he support you? Where will you two get your money for daily expenses? Living independently is hard. You need to think these things through, James argued. Brooke had enough and was angry at how James said he didn't trust Ethan. You know what, Dad? I don't need your approval, Brooke told him. I'm moving to San Francisco whether you like it or not. For the first few months, Brooke and Ethan were smug that they were able to move to San Francisco without anybody's help. They wanted to prove to Brooke's dad that they would make it, and they did, until Brooke found out she was pregnant. At the time, Brooke and Ethan started to worry about where they'd get enough money for her pregnancy and childbirth. Ethan didn't want to become a father, as he still had dreams of becoming a rock star. I can't be taking care of a child while touring, he's just going to ruin my vibe. He told Brooke one time, We'll go with you on tour, but we'll give you enough freedom and stay out of your way, Brooke suggested. Ethan shook his head. That's no fun at all. Everyone's going to know me as the lead singer with a kid and wife. Nobody wants that. He shot back. Brooke was heartbroken that Ethan was not happy about them having a child. She cried herself to sleep that day only to wake up to the sound of Ethan complaining about his situation to his bandmates on the phone the following morning. I don't want to be a dad, and I don't want to waste my money on those kinds of expenses, Brooke heard him say. Besides, life with a pregnant girlfriend is so boring. We don't get to do anything because she has to stay in bed all day, he sighed. Brooke could feel her heart breaking into pieces while hearing Ethan talk. What made matters worse is the line that came next. You guys are right, Ethan said. I'm better off alone. I should leave before Brooke wakes up. Ethan quickly packed his bags, assuming Brooke was still fast asleep. Little did he know, she was crying underneath the blanket, wondering how her life had turned out this way. When he left, Brooke cried loudly. Why? She cried out. I should have listened to my dad, she sobbed. She had no idea how to pay for the rent nor did she have a job to pay for her food. That day, knowing Ethan wasn't coming back, Brooke tried to sell everything she could. She sold her smartphone, she sold their television at home, and a few other appliances she could find. Unfortunately, those couldn't cover a month's rent. By the first week of a new month, the landlady kicked her out of the house for failing to pay. I'm sorry, Brooke. Business is business, the landlady said before shutting the door in her face. Heavily pregnant Brooke ended up at a bus stop. She sat there, wondering how she could possibly survive without no money or a roof over her head. She wanted to return to her dad's warm and cozy house, but she was too ashamed to give him a call. You were right, Dad, she said to herself. But I'm too ashamed to let you know that you were right, and I was wrong. Ethan was a bad man all along, and you saw that. 
I didn't, she cried. On the day before Christmas, Brooke was begging on the street when one of her former teachers noticed her. The teacher was on an excursion with her new class and saw her former best student with a huge belly, asking for money on the street. Without hesitation, the teacher called Brooke's dad. You need to head over to San Francisco now, she said. I just saw Brooke begging on the street. It seems she's been living without a home for quite a while now. Christmas Eve came and Brooke was watching the happy families enjoying nice warm meals in San Francisco's best restaurants. She had tears streaming down her face, knowing she might never get to experience that ever again. She was dirt poor and had no one in her life except her unborn child. Suddenly, her thoughts were interrupted by a hand extended in front of her, giving her a ticket. She looks at the hand and realizes it looked familiar with an extraordinary wedding ring on it. Brooke raises her head and sees her father. Dad, she cried, immediately standing to hug him. You're here. I never thought I'd see you again. I'm sorry, she sobbed. You were right all along. James cried as he hugged his daughter. He was heartbroken for her and was furious that Ethan did this to her. Why didn't you call me for help? He asked her. I'm your dad. I will always be here for you, no matter what happens. I was afraid you wouldn't forgive me, Dad. My pride didn't want me to admit my mistake. Brooke cried. I'm sorry, Dad. James hugged Brooke even tighter. Everybody makes mistakes, sweet child. We are human beings, not supermen. We are all allowed to make mistakes, and we all deserve forgiveness, he said, giving her a kiss on the forehead. Come on, he said wrapping his jacket over his daughter's shivering body. We're going home.